Project Omega really hones itself on the manifestation of the bilateral aspects of the human condition. But what does this mean? Alfred Binet would suggest that this symbiosis, such as the one of a corporate building saving Japan, is representative of the need for the self to see the singularity within the hive mind structure. I would instead ask if Alfred is familiar with the law of transient romantic unreliability and how it has impacted women in society since the late 80s in correlation to the young lady proclaiming that she wants to go to Tokyo before the television show she is featured in is interrupted by the new broadcast foreshadowing a grim future for Japan. But as I ruminate over the transcendental impact of the corporeal capitalist structure, I discern the true meaning behind Shoji Kawamori's 60 second piece. The truth was Project Omega was created not as an expression of identity or individuality. Rather, the chain reaction to Kawamori's unending torment of not being able to participate in 2001's Sega Gaga that Project Omega is Sega Gaga. The similarities are quite striking, and understandably so, as one of the 200 cut forms of material requiring copyright approval was Kawamori's parody video game covers of Macross that were to be featured in Sega Gaga. We further see this in the object hurtling towards Earth, sharing a relationship to the antagonist a Sega Gaga dogma. This is further evident as the building that transforms is the NHK headquarters, as Sega's headquarters also transforms during the events that that lead up to the end of the game, Sega Gaga. Further research has demonstrated that, at a point in time, NHK was looking to get into the console market and planned on partnering up with Sega in order to produce a console. Take, for example, the power meter draining. This is a further demonstration of the time that was running out to produce a console with Sega before their abandonment of the console market. And the lament of both Kawamori and NHK that they didn't have more power, with power being congruent to time. That's really interesting, because the entire concept revolves around our desire to have more time, when in reality it comes down to the fact that they outsource construction of the critical material, as we see by the building running out of power. The same way Hitmaker, who contributed funding towards Sega Gaga, helped get Toei on board for the animation at a reduced price. From all this, we can easily draw the full picture and spell out the conclusion that in 10 years time, virtual YouTubers would dominate the entire scene in retaliation to Sega Gaga never fulfilling its destiny. Yeah!